This mountain is my home. It's where I work and play. Some of my fondest memories are of my dad teaching me how to ski. And while this place at times has struggled to survive for over three quarters of a century, I remain committed to protecting this mountain and the people that ski it. When I come here, it's like, to me, this is my church. And everybody who comes here for the first time experiences it. They don't know how to put it into words, but they experience it. This mountain has more than one of Pennsylvania's steepest double diamond runs. I love to ski it. I greatly respect it. It will earn its black diamond anywhere. It's that steep. This mountain has history. It's kind of like family up here. It's a small little niche. It's not heavily commercialized. It's just kind of like being in your backyard and with all your friends and family and just go ski. It's just, it's a, it's a quaint little place. We'd gotten um, Fisher skis for Christmas, I remember. I was all excited. And we bought family passes when the kids were little and I you know, coerced them all into trying it. This one really loved it. So we, we, uh, we've been here a long time. What is Wildcat? Depending on who you ask, it is the steepest continuous slope in the state of Pennsylvania. True expert, it will earn its black diamond anywhere. It's that steep. It intimidates a lot of people. If you start down it, you cannot see the bottom you think, well, it can't get any steeper, then of course it does get steeper. I remember those days too, when you thought you had that skill and you got down there and said, no, you don't. As a member of the ski patrol, I have spent quite a bit of time hauling people off of it. We expect to have a few accidents every year. We're happy when we have had those because that means the cat is no longer hungry but she can be very hungry. The beginning was actually around 1940. The Mellon family decided they wanted to put in a ski slope and they brought a guy named Hannah Schneider over from Europe who laid out the original trails. I think I've been skiing here 60, this is my 61st year or 60th year, depending on how I can figure that out. I do remember that the first year I was here, Dr. Roche was still here. Ralph Dr. Roche, he was hired to be a ski instructor and ultimately became the president of the company. I can remember as a little boy, seeing him walk around and how impressive he was and everybody was afraid of him for some reason, I don't know. Doc was a member of the 10th Mountain Division, U.S. Army's elite mountain group. And after the war, the 10th Mountain veterans came back and took their love of the sport and the skills that they learned in the Army and organization and really kick-started the ski industry in this country. The original ski lodge was Midway Cabin, which still exists you know, and we used to have the midway cabin where you could socialize and the warming hut. I can remember coming up here and uh, being at the midway cabin to warm up and we had the old metal thermoses of hot chocolate and our Christmas cookies in a bag. And it was all run with rope toes. At one time it took five rope toes to get to the top of the hill, one of which you had to let go of, let the rope go around a corner and then re-grab. That was long before my time. When the Mellons left the industry and gave it to the state, Laurel Mountain was probably the most uh, developed ski resort in Pennsylvania. In 71 or 72, the lodge burnt, and I was a fireman at the time in town, and we, when we left on the fire trucks, you could see the flames from town, and it was, it was gone by the time we got here. 
the fire is what started it all. And then, you know, it, 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 it tried to struggle. It slowly, sadly, fell into disrepair. So many people grew up here skiing, and they took time out of their lives to work on getting this place reopened. And I wrote letters to everybody. I wrote to four different governors. You know, it was probably a group of dedicated people that kept Laurel Mountain on the front burner. Every year I'd pound them with more letters. You know, we need this place open. And they just wanted it so badly because they had such great memories of the place. On the strength of the letter writing and all the locals, it was, uh, we finally got it open. I just hope they keep us open and keep it kind of, kind of low key. If Vale comes in here and sees the potential of this, you know, maybe cuts a few more slopes and puts snow making everywhere, that's what this place needs. I don't want to see it get too commercialized because it is a hometown area that is a gem that attracts people here. It, it needs to be a part of the community and the only way it can do that is to get more people. Our, our hopes are that they do a little bit of improvements for us, you know, smooth out some of the rough edges and uh, keep us going for the next hundred years. For the sake of the sport, more than anything, I think Laurel Mountain deserves to continue to challenge uh, future generations of skiers and to test their mettle. I hope they just invest a little bit of time and money in it and see what we have. And I think they'll fall in love with it too, just like us.